Hello everyone, welcome to probably the most important section in my humble opinion of this class. We are now going to be solving DiffEQs with LaBlas transforms. I have summarized the golden process, as I like to call it, right here. It's basically, you have to take the LaBlas transform of the entire IVP, rearrange it to get an explicit function y of s, which I think we, yeah, we've done that before. Use whatever you need, partial fractions, complete the square, etc. Any sort of algebraic multi uh, manipulation that you can to get it into something that you can take the inverse of plus of, which is step four. And then the inverse, whatever it may be, is actually the solution of your IVP pose initially, which is nice. So now you see the power of this. The power of uh, the Laplace transform is that you turn calculus, right, differential equations, into algebra, which is kind of miraculous if you really if you really think about it. And so there's really nothing else for me to do rather than let's just do a problem and see how all this works out. So y double prime plus 2y prime plus y is equal to 18 e to the minus t, given our initial conditions that at 0 the function is equal to 7, and also the derivative at 0 is equal to minus 2. You can solve this using method of undetermined coefficients. You can solve it using variation parameters. Now, let's solve it the third and final way, which is Laplace transform. Cool. All right, so, again, organization, name of the game. Let's go ahead and I'll split this up into parts. I'm taking Laplace of everything, but I'm going to take it in terms of its individual parts. So Laplace of y double prime is going to equal s squared big Y of s, right, minus s y evaluated at 0, minus y prime at 0, right? Laplace of y prime is going to be s y of s minus y of 0, and then Laplace of y is simply just y of s. All right, good. So over here, this is just going to be, oh, and let's put a 2 over here. I'll take care of this now. Uh, which means that, obviously, this is multiplied by 2. S squared, y of s. That's fine. We can't do anything with that. Minus s, y of 0. So that's going to be a minus 7s. Minus y prime of 0. That's minus minus 2. So that's a plus 2. This over here is going to be 2s, y, s. Okay, great. Minus 2 times whatever it is at 0, which is 7, so that's minus 14. And then y of s is just y of s. So uh, we can just add those. Um, but let's go ahead and take the Laplace of what's on the right-hand side. Of 18e minus t, using your table, you should see that this is just 18 over s plus 1. Right? And good, so combine these four, right? Adhering to the equation that we were initially posed. So this is s squared y of s minus 7s plus 2 plus 2s y of s minus 14 plus y of s is equal to 18 s plus 1. Okay, good. Let's separate everything out else out. Uh, let's get the y of s's together. So that's s squared plus 2s plus 1 y of s. And then moving every the other stuff on the left-hand side to the right-hand side is going to yield 7s minus 2 plus 18 over s plus 1. Cool, cool. And now we want to get this explicit into for y of s. So y of s is going to yield. Uh, and so hopefully by now, or not hopefully by now, but maybe you can see that s squared plus 2s plus 1 is really just s plus 1 quantity squared. So this is going to be 18 over s plus 1 cubed, right? And then this is going to be plus 7s. Oh, sorry. So when I moved the minus 2 over, this actually becomes a minus 12. Or actually, no, plus 12. Wait, no, what am I doing? Plus 12, sorry. 
because I have the plus two and the minus 14, I, I think I just took care of the two. Again, organization. But I do catch myself, so that's good to know. Anyway, um, this is going to be plus quantity 7s plus 12 over quantity s plus 1 squared. Right? Okay. Now, we just have to take the inverse Laplace of this. So, inverse Laplace of this one. Let's think about this. It's clearly shifted in S, which means that there's going to be an E minus T, and then we want to take inverse Laplace of 18 over S cubed. S cubed, that sounds like T squared, right? The Laplace of T squared would give me, what, 2 over S cubed? So that means that there's a factor of 9 that I have to take into account, which means that this is really e minus t times 9 t squared. So that's the inverse Laplace of that first term. So that's good. Now, with some clever manipulation over here, we can say that this term is really 7s plus 1 plus... So if I group it like this, then this has to be 5. And so I'll separate them out now. s plus 1 squared, s plus 1 squared. From here, this goes away, and then the 2 goes away, provided that s is not equal minus 1, which is implied anyway, because otherwise none of this exists. Um, so this yields 7 over s plus 1 plus 5 over s plus 1 squared. And then these are also easy to take inverse Laplace of. Let me circle this, by the way, to make sure that we keep it. 7 over s plus 1 is the same as e to the minus t inverse Laplace of 1, or, sorry, 7 over s. And then this is also plus uh, 5 e to the minus t inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared. Right, And so, inverse Laplace of 7 over s is just 7, so this is going to be 7 e to the minus t, and then this other one is just going to be t, right? Uh, Laplace of t is equal to 1 over s squared, therefore the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared is equal to t. So this is plus 5t e minus t, and there we go. If we add this with these two, that is the solution to our IVP, and that's crazy to think about. We did no calculus. We did no eigenvalues. We did no lambdas. We did no method one determined coefficients. We simply just applied the transform, massaged it a little bit in the algebraic uh, sense, and then we got this. And there you go. That's uh, obviously going to be way harder depending on um, what's on the denominator and how hard partial fractions can be, but this is the general idea. And so if you get good at this, you're set, right? Awesome. Now, what about systems? That's probably important, right? And so obviously, I mean, you can solve this using the matrix exponential. You can solve this, you know, many other ways, but you can also solve it with Laplace. Uh, I'm including it in this video for completion. I know a lot of professors don't like to go over this section. Um, so feel free, if you know that your class doesn't use this, then that's the end of the video for you. Um, but in the case that they do, let's just go over it. And even if it's not in your in your class, it's it's good knowledge to know, right? So let's expand this, all right? What this really means, right, is that y one prime is equal to based on this system, it's equal to four y one minus four y two. Similarly, y two prime is equal to five y one minus four y2. Good. And then if we want to translate the initial condition as well, y1 of 0 is equal to 1, y2 of 0 is equal to 0. Right? Now take Laplace of what you have here. It's just a system of equations. So for this first one, what it becomes is s big y1 uh, minus y1 of 0 is equal to 4 big y1 minus 4 big y2. And then the other one as well becomes s times y2 
minus y2, little y2 evaluated at zero, is equal to big 5y1 minus 4 big y2. And then applying your initial conditions, I hope I have space here, is s big y1 minus y1 at zero is going to be minus 1 is equal to 4 big y1 minus 4 big y2. And then same here, s y2 minus zero, so that's just s y2 is equal to 5y1 minus 4y2. Yeah, I'm trying really hard to make these big because I know they can look like tiny, as in it looks like we didn't take Laplace transform, but uh, we did. And so hopefully you're picking up on that. I mean, for the sake of the problem, you have to. So, okay, cool. So going off of what we have here now, we put it back into a system, right? So, top equation becomes s minus 4 y1 plus 4 y2, big y2 is equal to 1. And then the bottom equation becomes minus 5 y1 plus quantity s plus 4 times y2 is equal to 0. Now we write this as a matrix. This is pretty easy to rewrite as a matrix, right? So this becomes s minus 4 minus 5 4 s plus 4 times big y1 big y2 is equal to 1, 0. Okay. We want to solve for y1, y2, right? So what this means, or implies really, is that big y1, big y2 is equal to the inverse of this 2 by 2 matrix multiplied onto the 1, 0. So that's 1 over the determinant. So same thing, you just apply what you already know. s minus 4 times s plus 4 uh, plus 20, right? multiply it onto, okay, so the first and fourth elements switch, so s plus 4, uh, s minus 4, and then you negate the other two, so that's minus 4 and 5. Multiply it onto 1, 0. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is computation. I trust you can do this on your own, so I'm going to skip a little bit. y1, y2 is going to equal to 1 over s squared plus 4, right? s plus 4 and 5. So that's what it comes out to. Therefore, you just read it off. This is big y1 is equal to, and so now I think I can write y1 of s to not um, be any more confusing, is equal to s over s squared plus 4 plus 4 over s squared plus 4. Because it's just this multiplied onto this thing, right? And so, if we want to take the inverse Laplace of this, then that first one should very obviously be cosine 2t. And then the second one should be 2 times sine 2t, right? Hopefully you're using your table, and I'm not just making this up in front of you. And so this is y1 of t for your system. So you're halfway there. You now need to find y2 of s. y2 of s is even simpler. 5 over s squared plus 4. I do not want to make that look like a 9, because that, in fact, changes the answer. It'll be 3 instead of a 2 inside. Uh, okay, so you take inverse Laplace, and then this becomes 5 halves sine of 2t. Wow, how did that happen? That is crazy. That's insane. I've never seen that happen. Alright, sine of 2t. And then that is equal to your y2 of t. And you're done. So again, now that we're nearing the end of the course, unfortunately, uh, well, I don't know, however you want to see it, um, everything that you've learned is coming into play.
right? You didn't think you'd see matrices again. There you go, you see matrices again. There's also another method of solving something that we've seen in chapter 6 so much, right? You are now becoming more masterful at this course just in general. You can like now pick and choose your methods in order to solve this and arrive at the answer that, you know, is hopefully correct. And so, I mean, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So next section is about discontinuous functions um, and periodic functions. And yeah, that one is also very cool. Very illuminating section for sure. So see you then.